Hi, my name's Phil, I like to talk about politics, and in this video, I'm essentially going to carry on talking about the problems we are starting to face with food supplies as we enter summer in Britain. Yesterday, very much about the specific problems with Northern Ireland and Brexit. Today is about Britain and Brexit, because the problems are not just in Northern Ireland. Different causes of the problems, but Brexit is screwing us all over. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, earlier today, I was talking about food shortages in Britain through our huge shortage of lorry drivers. Absolutely unprecedented problems with the supply chain as a result, for which the government are going to have to back down on some aspect of their Brexit mindset to solve it. Or not solve it and see people realising just how damaging Brexit is. As I said earlier, if it hits businesses or jobs, not everyone sees that as a problem because it doesn't seem to be affecting them. Even if it is affecting them, they don't necessarily see it. But empty supermarket shelves, that affects everyone. But in this video, I'd like to discuss other labour shortages, all caused by the same thing. Foreign workers that have not returned as pandemic travel restrictions have eased because of our post-Brexit immigration policies. And I'd like to kick off with a bit of a, a related, it's a bit of a tangent, but it is related, from a few press quotes someone put together um, of a Brexit supporter's Brexit journey. Three statements about Brexit from the same TV celebrity in the hospitality industry in the Daily Express. Now, I don't know of them myself, I don't watch television, but instructive nonetheless. The first one has them bashing the way the EU is run and uh, using it to explain why they are supporting Brexit. Now, this is 2016. Now, this sort of comment, I always sort of say, is like is absolutely ridiculous because it only works, you can only have this mindset if you see the EU is different to you. Like, we were a part of the EU. There wasn't a them and us, we were the us. So who is this EU that is treating the UK poorly? I mean, we were one of the big members of the EU. Absolute nonsense. And it... And it it cannot make sense unless you always saw them as something different to you. But then the second one seems to be a change of tack. See, here they're saying they voted to leave because of the old chestnut, democratic sovereignty. Different reason given to in 2016, but I'm not going to make much of that. You know, not from a few clippings from the Daily Express. It is possible they may have had multiple reasons after all. But this one is from 2017, where they seem to be regretting the vote. I was thinking to myself, this is 2017. This is years before we actually leave. It was only a few months after we triggered Article 50. Loads of time before it was actually going to happen. Loads of time. You know, we were scheduled to leave 21 months after they said this. So there's still 21 months to go. And even at this point, they can still now see what a mess the whole thing is. They're regretting it at this point. Then fast forward to 2021, a few days ago, and they're now into full-scale Brexit regret, you know, um, because of what it's doing to their business. And they're not making, they're not like uh, one of these former Brexit party MEPs that's trying to make up excuses. They know what it's caused by. They know what it's caused by. Staff shortages caused by Brexit. What about all that claptrap about Europeans nicking our jobs, eh? Well, those jobs are going spare. They're there. Vacancy, apply within. Where are all the Brits to take them on? But anyway, many parts of the supply chain, which of course need to service the hospitality industry, but I'm focusing on food for this video. Um, you've got production, both in terms of farm pickers as well as factory processors, missing migrant labor big time. We've also got packaging and storage facilities short of staff. I would have thought it's actually quite a good time to be a worker in the industry because you may not get paid more, although well, maybe the shortages bite a bit more, but you can at least command a bit of respect. The problem, I suppose, with uh, the, having the sort of job where your boss thinks they can just replace you with someone else is uh, they're not always going to be that polite to you. Some bosses will be. There are always good managers. Of course there are. But there will be some who just think, well, I can be as rude to you as I like. If you walk out the door, I'll just get someone else. It's not a problem. Well, they can't do that now. Can't do it. But it's not great for the industry and it's not great for us over the next few months or even years till they sort it out. But I can't believe they'd let this go for years. It, and it's no longer a problem that's coming either. It's already started, according to those in the industry. 
Shane Brennan of the Cold Chain Federation, whom I've talked about a lot over the past couple of years, made it clear that this is a different crisis. They've been through multiple crises. This is different. He was warning of capacity problems ahead of, like, there were the crises in cold storage in the past were, as we were getting towards um, the cutoff date where we would leave the cliff edge of a no deal Brexit if we didn't get a deal or extend it. So obviously lots of stockpiling went on and we were always up to capacity. You know, spring 2019, autumn 2019, winter 2020, up to capacity, lots of stockpiling. But he said the problem this time is that they simply don't have the labour to cope. So the problem is very different, so they're going to need very different solutions. But what solutions do you have for a shortage of labour? Recruiting's not happening. So without a change in immigration rules from the government, what scope is there for a cunning solution in that area? So when you've got a labour shortage and you can't get more labour, your only other options is when it comes to dealing with that is turning to more efficient systems that require fewer workers or getting more hours out of your current employees. That's it, working them harder. The first thing is um, naturally happens anyway. Private industry doesn't exist to keep people in jobs. If they had a way to manage with fewer staff, they'd have been doing it anyway. They don't just wait for a crisis. No one comes up with a plan. Oh, we've got this plan we could do with, we could manage with half our workforce. Oh, should we, should we make 50% redundant then? No, 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 let's wait for a crisis. It's not how private business works. You know, as for working people for longer, well, that's obviously, or they've obviously done that as much as they can because there are still concerns. I'm not seeing reports of, we're not got as much staff as we would like, but not to worry, you know, we'll get, we're giving more overtime to people. They are worried. A report said that the British Meat Processors Association said that their capacity was down 10% due to this issue alone. People and skills not available in the UK is how they bluntly put it. They also pointed out another issue. So they're already being hit by labour shortages. Their production is 10% down. As we are moving away from COVID lockdown, more of the hospitality industry has been opening up. Now this has exacerbated the shortages because they are also in need of workers. Often the same workers that you're short of in one, you know, in a, that would work in a cafe or a pub, would work in a meat processing factory. So you've got someone in a meat processing factory going, there's a job down the pub, that's better pay, or I'd just prefer to do that job, off they go there. And hospitality are also set to want to power up even more when the final layer of restrictions is eased which is now scheduled for the middle of next month. And the problems are just going to keep feeding each other. So consider this. The food industry supply chain is already missing deliveries. That's happening now. That's not, this is now. They were saying this is going to happen a few months ago. Now it's happening. It's already happened. For whatever reason, they're telling us that deliveries are not being made to supermarkets and restaurants at times. Food is going to waste as a result. Hospitality starts opening up even more. They need staff, so the labour shortages become worse. But they also need food. So at a time when the supply chain already can't actually supply the demand reliably, we're headed towards a summer where the demand is going to increase. But the staff shortages won't ease. There's nothing at all on the horizon to improve the situation. Like I'm thinking in my own head, right, the best case scenario I can think of is students finishing their year at university or A-levels or GCSEs, wanting summer work, will that? Again, it may ease it a little bit, but it's not going to solve it. Otherwise, like if I can think of that, you can bet your ass the industry have thought of that. And if they thought that was going to deal with the issue, they wouldn't be talking about a crisis. So all these little things you might imagine might help the situation are obviously not going to do enough. This is why those in the industry say there is now no way to head off shortages this summer. It's already begun. And whatever solutions they think the government can reasonably help with, because that's presumably what they had their talk with on Wednesday, they will have told the government, you can help the situation by doing this, this and this. Regardless of whether the government will or not, they're now of the view that there's nothing can stop the looming train wreck. You might also think that if the government don't do anything at all, that the situation won't even improve in the medium term either. Of course, despite everything, I would still, as I said in the last video, find it hard to believe that the government would actually do nothing. 
I've said before, it would be a madness beyond even a Brexit mindset to allow food shortages to expose the damage that leaving the single market has caused. The Grocer, which is an industry journal, pointed out that many of the workers had accumulated leave as well that they'd be needing to use this summer. So not only can't they get enough staff now, and not only are they facing even greater demand in a month, when they can't even meet the now demand, assuming Johnson doesn't delay the roadmap again, that is, then they're going to be managing at any one time with even fewer staff due to annual leave being taken. And then I got to thinking, so our food and drink exports to the EU were reduced by 47% in the first quarter of 2020, a loss of £2 billion from our economy. Now, I get that not everything we are selling to the EU necessarily has a market in Britain, but in terms of the impact on jobs in the industry, those working on food production for export we're basically saying we're only about half as productive effectively. So wouldn't there be potential supply of workers from the export side of the industry for the domestic supply side? Obviously geographies is a factor. You know, I do know some people get confused at the concept of job shortages when there is unemployment, poor lambs. But you know, it's no good having a load of unemployed people in Middlesbrough if the jobs go and spare in Basingstoke. But there are factors that you would think would have eased the situation here. Like I said, you know, students wanting summer work, um, workers in, in one part of the industry that's been buggered by Brexit, you know, losing their jobs, they're available. But despite there potentially being more employees because either Brexit or the pandemic has knackered their old jobs, there are still shortages, severe shortages, crisis level shortages. So what's going to happen if parts of the economy start to grow again, at least when the shadow of COVID recedes? How are they going to get the workers if parts of our economy that are already under capacity can't find any? The more you think about it, the more you can see that the government are simply going to have to severely dilute Priti Patel's immigration nonsense. There's a reason why the Conservatives used to moan about immigration, but do nothing about it. it had nothing to do with the EU, because other EU countries had tighter immigration controls than we did. It's because we depended on migrant labour. We said this for years and we dismissed. We tried to point it out again last year when the pandemic hit and we couldn't get migrant farm workers or anywhere near enough. Where's this queue of British workers to do those jobs then, we asked. No response. Well, now it's happening on a grander scale across more of the economy. We've basically told an army of EU workers to bugger off. So where's this queue of British workers that were, for some inadequately explored reason, not able to get those jobs for themselves? Where is this mythical workforce? Answers on a postcard and send it to the food or logistics industry because they would really like to know. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.